Well, hello everyone out there in music land. I hope you're doing well today. I wanted to show you guys four tips to help with string bending. Now, before we look at those four tips, let's talk about what string bending is. Okay, now I would define string bending as a creative way to get from one pitch to another pitch. Okay, so imagine I have the 12th fret on the third string here, G. Okay, and I want to move that note two frets higher. What could I do? Well, I could pick both notes. Okay, I could slide. I could hammer on. But string bending is different than all of those other techniques because string bending enables you to hear all of the sound in between the two notes. Okay, so what string bending is, is it would be taking the first note there and pushing the string up or pulling the string down until you get to that second pitch. Okay, so here's how it would sound. Right? Or going the other way. Now notice that the pitch goes up either way. So if I push the string up or pull it down, the pitch always goes up to that other note. But that's what string bending is. It's a very vocal-like technique, right? You can do that with your voice, that duh. You know, you can kind of bend up like that with the vocal. But not every instrument has the ability to do this. Uh, piano, as an example, would not have the ability to pitch bend, um, unless it's a keyboard. But if it's an acoustic piano, there's no way to hear the sound in between the two notes. So this is one of the guitar's biggest strengths, is the ability to string bend. So it's more common on electric guitar, although acoustic guitars do this also. So this is relevant whether you play acoustic or electric. So let's take a look at these four tips now to help improve your string bending. Tip number one is thumb position. Now, classically speaking, proper thumb position on the guitar is always to have the thumb behind the neck, straight up and down. Now, if you watch some of the greats play, like Jimi Hendrix, you're gonna see his thumb over the neck all the time. I think it depends what you're doing. Um, there are certainly some things where the thumb's gotta be behind the neck. So things like power chords, bar chords, any sorts of big stretching that you're doing, you've gotta have your thumb low. There's no way to do those things with the thumb above the neck. I would not recommend that. However, I do think that string bending is one exception to that rule. Because string bending tends to be more of a wrist technique than a finger technique. And you've got to really be able to kind of dig underneath those notes and scoop into them oftentimes. So what I would recommend is make this kind of shape here with your hand, like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the neck of the guitar right in our thumb joint here, okay? So we've got this kind of a thing. And then the motion is this way. So it's more of a wrist, side-to-side -side wrist thing. You see, I'm not even moving my fingers. I'm just moving the wrist here. And so the idea is we grab a note and we use our wrist to scoop under it or to pull it down. You know, we're kind of pulling against that thumb joint there. That's the idea. If you try to keep your thumb behind the neck and push the string up with just your fingers, that's uncomfortable and it's hard to control. So I know there are differing views on this, but that's my opinion, is that you use your thumb joint like that, you use the wrist to string bend, and that's gonna give you the most control and the most comfort when you're bending. Tip number two, know when to push the string up and when to push the string down. Now, there are a couple of obvious ones here, right? Because the high E is an example has to go up. You can't bend the high E down, or you'll do that. You'll just bend right off the neck, right? Same thing with the low E. The low E, you can't push that one up, because you're just going to bend off the neck, okay? And I would say it's pretty safe to say the same thing for the B string and the A string. You know, the B string, again, pretty much always is going to have to go up if you're string bending that one. You don't have very much room to go down. You can go down a little bit, but not, not very much. Uh, same thing with the A string. You know, that one's probably going to have to go down. Not much room to push it up, right? Now, the two in the middle, G and D, those are the two that you can sort of play with a little bit because there's enough room to push those up or down. And you'll see great guitars doing both. Where that's going to matter is in the context of what you're doing. So if it's this note that I've been working with here, let's see, like the G to the A, right? If it's that note, um, if it's just that note by itself, you know, maybe we bend it down. Again, meaning that we're pulling the string down. Now, the pitch is still going up, right? But we're pulling the string down. If I'm bending in the context where I have another note involved, like let's say I'm playing this note here, and I'm doing this sort of thing. 
okay? Then I have to bend up. Because if I don't, I'm gonna bend right into my other note. And that just doesn't work, right? Because now my third finger is muting the B string. Doesn't work, so I've gotta bend it up to get it off of that other string. So that's where the context matters with G and D. But with the other two strings, with the high E and the B, you gotta bend those up. With the low E and the A, you gotta bend those down. Tip number three, always bend in tune. Okay, so it's important to remember, like we talked about at the beginning of this video, that when you're bending, you're playing two pitches. You're playing the original pitch and then the pitch that you are bending to. Okay, so bending is not this random technique that sort of just throws the note up there and guesses. We are usually targeting another pitch, okay? So if I've got the 12th fret here on the G, okay, and I wanna go a half step up, that's one fret up, that's generally the smallest. You can do a quarter step bend and things like that, but usually we're targeting another note, okay? So a half step would be the smallest distance in music. So if we're going here to here, There it is, right? Okay, whole step will be two frets up. Now those are gonna be the two most common kinds of bends that you'll see, half step and whole step. You can keep going though. We could go. Right? There it is. What about two steps? it is. So you can bend that high, but the whole step and the half step, those are going to be the main ones. So when you're practicing your string bending, always double check against the actual note. Okay. So again, if I want to play a whole step bend, I play this note, I play a whole step higher. I get that pitch in my head and I match it. Okay. So that's good practice there. It's kind of like learning to sing. You've got to develop the ear to hear when the pitch is in tune and out of tune. Number four, and finally, always brace your bends when possible. Now you've seen me do this already in this video. If I'm using my first finger, there's nothing I can do. Okay. I can only use one finger there. So, you know, I'll just bend with one finger, obviously. Right. But if you're bending with any other finger, stack your other fingers on that same string to help push the note up, okay? So if I'm bending with my second finger, I'll have first and second fingers both on the string here, okay, to help. If I'm bending with my third finger, you saw me do this earlier with those bigger bends, like the, the step and a half and the, the two-step bend, I had all three fingers stacked there, okay? That would be very difficult if I just took my third finger and just tried to push that one up. That would be very hard. Um, pinky, certainly. I mean, there's no way you'd be able to bend with your pinky on its own. You've got to brace. You know, you got to get all four fingers there. And that's how you're going to bend with your pinky. When possible, always brace your bends. Don't think that you have to push the string up with only one finger. The only finger you have to do that with is your first finger. Any other bend should be braced with multiple fingers on the same string. That's going to give you the strength to do it. So I hope these four tips have been helpful. Have fun making music, and I will see you next time.